All right, ladies and gents, in this brief lecture, I'm going to try to do some uh, some basic anatomy of the ear. Oh, yeah. Um, anybody else need a copy of this? Here you go. Uh -huh. And so we're going to start on the outside and work our way in. I'm going to show you some boundaries here as well. Uh, first, let's start with the flap out here this whole thing now if you have multiple piercings in your ear it's likely that you know way more anatomy about the outer ear than I do uh, you know with the tragus and all these types of things like that for my purposes and our purposes here just know that this is called the pinna the whole thing is called the pinna sometimes also called the auricle an auricle is just a fancy word for flap but this flap is a little more sophisticated because it helps to funnel sound into this tube right here. Now I'd like for you to draw a line right here and then trace a line up this way and around like that. Everything that's in this space here is middle ear. Everything that's out this way is going to be what? going to be outer ear, sometimes called external ear. I don't want you to be confused if you see that external ear. And that means everything on the inside of it is going to be inner ear or internal. The distinction here is this cutoff point, is the eardrum. The eardrum all the way into this space here all of this is middle ear. This is where most infections happen or at least start. If they go untreated, they start here and they travel this way. All right. This passageway right here is called the external auditory canal. From your anatomy one class with me, also called the external auditory meatus in the skull, also called the external acoustic canal. Any of those are fine. The channels the sound in this way, and it's lined with these little glands in here called ceruminous glands. And what do ceruminous glands make? Yeah. Wax. Is wax good or bad? Yes and no. Okay, tell me why yes and why no. Well, it's good because it gets rid of the debris and stuff, and it's bad because it clogs up your ears and it makes more piercing sound. Exactly, okay. So we need it. It's good for us because it traps junk. It traps bacteria, which would love to cause an infection. It traps dust and debris and stuff like that and traps it in there. And steadily, as it does, it works its way out that the earwax will clear some of itself out. But yeah, it can be bad if your ear produces too much of it actually blocks this. Otherwise, folks, leave it alone. Unless it actually is blocking the ear passage or it's like, you know, falling out of your ear and you can see it, you can clear it off the outside. But a Q-tip is pretty bad for this. If you jam a Q-tip in there, you're actually just packing the earwax over the eardrum. And this can rupture pretty easily, and it's quite painful. So yeah, try not to introduce anything into your ears unless you absolutely have to. This guy right here with lots of nerves in it that, that moves to the sound of my voice right now, it's called the tympanic membrane, also known as your what? Eardrum. Eardrum. Why tympanic then? What word sounds like that? Timpani. Timpani, yeah. The timpani is it's a large, wide drum, and it responds to sound. As sound waves, which are pressure waves, come in and they, and they hit the eardrum, it causes it to vibrate. It vibrates back and forth, faster with higher pitches, uh, slower with lower pitches and things like that. And the eardrum moving moves these three things. One, two, and three. And we'll label those where we have just a little bit more room over here. Those guys are known as the auditory 
<coughs> ossicles. In other words, ear bones. These are by far the smallest bones in the human body. Number one is the first one is called the malleus, sometimes called the hammer. It's like mallet. The second one is called the incus, not to be confused with the Aztecs. <laughs> See what I did there? Incus is known as the anvil. And the last one is called the stapes, or the stirrup. Those are all little bones located in the middle ear that helps to amplify the movements of the eardrum. They're attached one to another. The malleus is attached directly to the eardrum. And if you go to the doctor, they can actually look at your eardrum, and if everything's like it's supposed to be, it should be transparent, and they should be able to see the two attachments of the malleus bone to the back of the eardrum itself. Now, if they look in your ear and they see little droplets on the back of the eardrum, it means you have an ear infection. Or if it's puffed out, or they can see pus back behind it and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, these things right here, the malleus moves the incus, which moves the stapes, which is attached to this. And we're going to talk about some pretty complex mechanisms of how this works in our next lecture. But for our purposes today, just know that these, the eardrum moves and it moves these bones. But we have this tube right here. And this tube is important because this tube leads out to the nasopharynx otherwise known as your throat. More specifically, your nose throat. My throat was hurting on Friday a little bit because I had a lot of drainage. My, my nasal passages, my sinuses were producing a lot of mucus and that mucus was draining down the back of my throat and irritating the lining of my throat. Um, people who specialize in the throat and nose also specialize in the ear because all three are connected. They're called otolaryngologists or ear, nose, and throat doctors because this tube attaches directly to that. That's why a sinus infection or an upper respiratory infection can turn into an ear infection really easily because this tube opens back to that. Now this tube remains closed most of the time. It opens either when we open our jaw a certain way, when we swallow, and when we yawn. That's why you can relieve ear pressure by chewing gum because chewing gum, we swallow a lot when we chew gum because we're basically making a sugar beverage out of our own saliva. That's disgusting, isn't it? But uh, as we swallow over and over again, this tube opens up and allows the pressure to regulate because the pressure on the inside here of the middle ear needs to be the same as the pressure on the outer ear. Uh, and this this tube right here I should have named, depends on who you ask, it's called, I'm, I'm sorry Mr. Sharp, but I'm going to go ahead and say it, it's called the Eustachian tube. My anatomy teacher in high school insisted this was called the Eustachian tube, with a K sound, Eustachian tube. But everyone I've ever encountered since has ever called it the Eustachian tube, so I'm starting to lean the other direction. To make this a little easier and maybe not offend people, we can call this the auditory tube because it's the same thing. This tube regulates pressure and it's necessary because pressure in the atmosphere is changing constantly. Today, for example, the pressure in the atmosphere is becoming less because when it rains, it rains as a result of low pressure cells in the atmosphere. So the pressure here is decreasing. That means the pressure inside of this space is going to be higher in comparison. So excess air has to leave this. If you drive through the mountains or valleys, the higher you go up, the less atmospheric pressure there is. Therefore, you have to relieve pressure this way. As you go down in the mountains, your, the pressure on the outside is greater and you need to allow air in this way to regulate. So this is constantly regulating air pressure. regulating air pressure. 
with the goal being the middle ear and external ear having the exact same pressure in it. That's the goal. Okay. If you ever notice, and you might notice this in the future now, if, if you make noises when you yawn, like I do, I sound like Chewbacca. <laughs> anyway, uh, briefly during that yawn, it gets super loud. Have you ever noticed that? You yawn, it gets super loud for just a second. You'll notice it next time. That's because that eustachian tube is open at that moment. And in that instant, you're hearing from the inside and the outside of your eardrum. Yeah. All right. So that's it for today. Tomorrow we're going to finish up by talking about what happens in this snail-looking thing called the cochlea.